This week on Nintendo Main, we found out that you can wear Tingle's costume in Breath of the Wild. And why the hell is there a moblin in the sky? I don't know. Nintendo Main episode 68. We are your hosts. I'm Trey Kamiko Johnson. And I'm Jeremy 999 Mikowski. 999. Is, like, is that like no, no, no? Is that what you mean by yeah. that? Yeah. I'm German now. I just wanted to say. I've become, <laughs> become a German citizen. Yeah. Anyone German never did anything bad. You'd be all right. <laughs> they have good food. Uh, yeah. And good beer sometimes. We are here to bring you uh, the, hopefully, your, your favorite Nintendo based podcast that's filled with news and fun and really long episodes if you listen to all of our episodes for last week uh thanks that's probably the longest one we ever did we're gonna try to do a little one a little bit shorter this week but i feel like every time i say that we still end up with some sort of 90 minute piece of beauty yeah so, something to, to you know to occupy you on a long commute yeah if you happen to be driving across the world you can listen to it or if you you know drive around and do stuff if you have to drive yeah. drive for a living you can listen to it yeah do you deliver pizzas Listen to our podcast. Yeah, it'll help you. <laughs> help you stay sane while you're delivering pizzas. Are you an Uber driver? Force your uh, riders to listen to our podcast. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Last week, regardless of how long the episode was, we still didn't get to our Mario Kart Top 8. So any of you who are upset about that, uh, we'll Sorry give it to you right now. Guys. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we failed our listeners. We, fa- we failed in our longest episode of all time, but still forgot one thing. But they can always get longer. <laughs> If you support yeah. us financially, we can double the length of our episodes and do four, five-hour episodes. Yeah. They're actually, if you ever go to the website, there is actually a link to, to support us financially if you want to. It's in the Contact Us page. Yeah, contact you, you us can, with money. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, you can find it on NintendoMainPodcast.com. All right, we'll go back and forth. What's your number one? I think ours is the same on this. Number one, Mario Kart? It's got to be eight. Yeah, Mario Kart 8, same with me. Uh, I will even say Deluxe now. Yeah. If you, if you want to count that as... Yeah, you did get Mario Kart Deluxe, which we're going to get. We'll talk about that for sure, but let's do that after our news. Um, yeah, I say eight, number one, for sure. What's your two? Might be the same two, one as two. Uh, 64, man. Oh, really? Oh, man. Mine is a DS, Mario Kart DS, all the way. Yeah. I, I love the crap out of that game. Like, I feel like they took, uh, I, we said, I said it in the last episode, but they took all, they took what they, you know, the best level from Double Dash was DK Mountain. And I felt like they took that level and just ran with it. And Mario Kart DS. You have like the Waluigi pinball, which is so cool. You know, you have like the, you have the air, airship level where you, where they, where you go out of a cannon and that too. I just felt like all the levels were like incredibly creative and it was the first time that you got all the retro courses and I really liked that. Plus first time like online mode, like all the characters were really good. It was the only one that had mission mode. Like there was all just, it was my all time favorite one until Mario Kart 8 came out. So it really felt like a con- console quality game on. A handheld. Oh, it was great. And, and a lot of stuff on the DS did start to feel that way over time. I mean, for real. But, I mean, this is one of the earliest I can remember. Like, that could have been on, well, I don't know. It would have had to have been on something between the 64 and the GameCube because that's where the DS set yeah. the horsepower. But whatever that famed console is, this would have perfectly been. It would look great on the TV. Yeah, they would have probably had to fix the resolution a little bit. If you've played it on the Wii U. I don't think it looks that bad. It's not terrible, but, you know. I don't really mind it. I mean, I'm still uh I'm a very retro-minded gamer. I still play a lot of my my old games, and I don't really, I don't know. I thought it looked fine. Well, it it could benefit from a graphical overhaul, overhaul, even if that was just brightening it and making it sharper somehow, maybe increasing the frame rate. Sure. Whatever they could do to visually polish it, I think this could stand. I think it could stand as a console game, even though I did not read it number two like you did. Yeah. It could have been Super Mario 64 too if somehow they magically came out with a modem. (laughs) <laughs> and then put it online. I guess, but aside from the online stuff, it could be it could be a sequel to Mario Kart 64 too. I guess, even yeah. though I don't know if the 64 could have like done as much as because the DS is like more powerful than the 64. But but it's it looks like the progression, I guess, graphically is where that one would be. Yeah, they were essentially using the DS's ability to do the 64 stuff like as tech demos. Yeah, you know, it's sure. like, well, check it out. Here's a launch game or whatever. It was near launch the Mario 64. Oh yeah, that was launch. That was day yeah, one. It was launch. It's like, hey, check it out. You can uh, carry a 64 in your pocket now. Yeah. And that was that was launch, so. Yeah. This you was can. even further beyond that. It was a little, you know, it was, what, over a year after launch? 
You can carry an analog game without an analog stick. It's great. <laughs> What's uh, number three? Uh, the original, man. Oh, yeah. So I'm definitely, if you can't tell, I'm nostalgia's ha- having a, a little bit of an effect on me here. As far as games I, pl- I remember playing the most and the ones that had the biggest impression on me, you know, I'd have to say Mario Kart 8 is just the most fun. That's why it's number one. But, you know, 64 and, you know, before that, the original game that I'm putting at number three. Just played the shit out of this game and, uh, it was uh, a great bonding tool for a lot of my friends and family playing this game together. And, you know, I got a lot of couch play, so to speak, like the two-player couch play. So, yeah, definitely this one. And the fact that I found out more about it even in college, about, like, the ghosts and stuff later on, like, yeah. that just – it's crazy that that game had that longevity. Sure. I think I rated my list more to, like – like because I played through all of them again before our last episode. And I played it on the ones that I like playing now, I guess. So, I mean, and and I guess uh, the DS one, I never really stopped playing that one because I liked it so much. Like, I played it a lot for a long time on the on the DS. And then I continued to play it when it came out for the Wii U. I bought it again and, and like, played through most of it. So, and, the, and this unfortunately, the Super Mario Kart game, like, I never had that game, so it kind of didn't rank very high for me. But for my number three, I put Double Dash on there just because uh, I had a re- I'd really had a blast playing it again. And that was a game that I... Really enjoyed when it came out. Played a lot of it. Aside from the some some negative views that people thought of it, I thought it was a really cool game. I like the incredibly cartoony of it, how everything has eyes and all that, and the two player mechanic, which we never saw again. <laughs> but you rank, you're still ranking it kind of high here. Yeah, I put it in number three for like games that I liked playing the most, I guess, in the last week when I played through those. I mean, the only thing you could argue, like Mario Kart or Mario Kart 64. Could argue could be higher than that, but any other ones, I say definitely are not better than Double Dash. Okay, like between like seven or Wii. Yeah, what's your number four? My number four is Mario Kart Seven. Oh, higher than you put it higher than I did. Yeah, man, this game sold me a system, sold me on a system. Played the shit out of it. Uh, still play it. Still pop it on my DS and play it. I'd say eh, a couple times a month. Oh yeah. It looks good. It's the only game that's truly 3D out of all of them in the sense that it looks 3D. It's a lot of fun, man. And once again, I, I feel a console quality game on a on a handheld. What did you? I don't remember. Did you say what your favorite level was on that one? I'm sure we did. But your favorite well, race. if I remember correctly, I said something about Music Park. Oh yeah, Music Park. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was probably my favorite or the one that yeah. made the most of most uh, impression on me. Biggest yeah. impression. I mean, that game looked good, but the, the courses just weren't very memorable to me. Like, that was my big problem with it. Like, it was kind of like, and I did, I bought a system, I bought the system to play the game too. It was the first game I bought for DS, or for 3DS, and I was like, I was over, overly disappointed with it in the long run. I mean, it wasn't really, I don't know, it didn't have that stay power to me, and I, I played through it, you know, I played it online a little bit, but I didn't keep returning to it like I did with, like, any of the other ones that are ranked ahead of it in my list. So that one got lower than yours. But my number four is your number two. Super Mario Kart 64. Well, Mario Kart 64, which, you know, was my favorite in high school, and I still hold it up fairly high. I think it's, I, I think it's, uh, it hasn't aged as well as some of the other ones, but it's still fun to play. And it did, and it did have the best battle mode on it out of all of them, I thought. Until, yeah, until probably it, the new one, which I haven't played yet, but you have, and we'll talk about it later. Yeah. That's my four. What's, what's five? Five for me? Yeah. DS. Oh man, that's so low. Even though you spoke so highly of it earlier. I did, man. <laughs> I did, but it's a great game. I it, like I said, it was my number one for a while until eight. It's like when if I if I were to reevaluate my list, I might flip flop this in Mario Kart Seven just because I'm thinking, you know, they 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 have very similar stories for me though. They're both the games that made me buy that particular system, yeah, and uh, they're games that I return to for a long time afterwards because they're so convenient to pick up and play at any time. Just sitting right there and yeah, on the table, pick it up, play it wherever you go. Yeah, that, I did kind of regret that I got Mario Kart 7 as a physical copy and not a digital. Because if I had a digital, then I could just boot it up whenever I wanted to on the game, you know. Like, no matter where, if I was carrying the system around, I'd be like, oh, I'll just go play a couple races and then pop out of it and go to a different I know, game. man. I really wish that if you bought the physical version, you could put the digital version on your system. But I understand Yeah, that would allow you to essentially have two copies of the game. Yeah. Well, that doesn't cool with that. Well, that would be ideal. Actually, I'm sure I mentioned this before on previous pod, on previous episodes, but Marvel used to do that. It used to. They used to do it where you bought a comic and you got a digital copy of it. To my, my own, like, dismay, I just found out that they don't do that anymore. It, like, really pissed me off because I used to read a lot of their uh, comics on my phone, like, when I was waiting around for whatever. And they've they completely cut that. Like, now 
you get random old comics free with your purchase of the of the new comic but you don't get that the copy of that digitally anymore i always thought that was cool i thought that was cool that they were like the pioneer of that like being like oh hey you get a free digital copy for every comic but they cut that i guess uh maybe they weren't making enough money or something i know it's a nintendo podcast but it's sad to say that they were always i'd always say like do like marvel does but now you can't say that because they don't do that anymore unfortunately yeah. so it's sad and well, i'd I, say I'm, I'm definitely experiencing that to a certain degree too because as you know i i'm trying to switch back to being a physical game buyer and not digital even though the the convenience of digital is awesome. Now, why why is that? Like, I I see people saying that about the Switch, but don't you want to be? I mean, I want to be an all digital guy for the Switch because it's a hand, because it's a handheld. I want everything to be accessible. That's how I feel about it. I don't. I'm not. You know, I'm not in the position to sell my games anymore. I mean, I used to do that, but I feel like every every game I sold just and I always wish that I never sold it and I ended up buying it again later. Well, you I know, went so, unless I went, it was something awful, but. I went all digital on my DS or my, on my 3DS for the most part. I have a few yeah, so did I. 3DS games, but I loved it for the most part. But I do wish I had some of these physical copies of these 3DS games, you know, sitting on my shelf that I could look at and hold. And you know, that's my game. And instead, I've more or less just paid for the rights to have the software on my system. Yeah, but I don't physically own the software. Yeah. Um, but now it's on your system. Right. But anyway, what I was getting at is I'm feeling that now because I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I bought a physical copy of it, mainly because it was a lot cheaper to do it that way because of the Amazon Prime. Well, yeah, yeah but, I guess that yeah that makes sense in your situation. If you have the Amazon Prime, then you can go for the yeah go for the 20% off but I can't, on every game. I can't think of two games that I would love to just switch on the fly back and forth between right now on the Switch than this and... Breath of the Wild. I wish I could go play some Breath of the Wild and then save and then race a couple courses. When I get sick of that, go back to Zelda. I can't do that without physically changing the cartridge in the system. And I'm already yeah. kind of like, ugh, already kind of thinking like, <laughs> yeah, you already wish I'll, you would have got it. Maybe I'll buy one of these digitally too, but not really. Not I don't really feel that way yet. You should. Uh, well, you have two Mario Kart eights. You got you got two Breath of the Wilds. I mean, why not add a third one on there? Why not? I know. You know? It's stupid. <laughs> uh, I should have, if I would have been thinking ahead about all of this. Well, the thing is, I once again, the reason I bought Zelda, I had multiple reasons for buying it as a physical copy. One of which, same thing, it was for the discount, the 20% discount. Yeah. Um, but I also wanted a cartridge to taste. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted on, you know, launch day when I got my Switch. I knew I was going to download snipper clips or at least the demo anyway. So I was going to get the experience of the eShop and the physical game. You know, I wanted to round out my full experience with the Switch on day one. Well, sure. I mean, that's part of why I ordered Puyo, Puyo, Puyo Tetris. Well, yeah. I, bu- I, well, I bought it because it was the only, I felt like it was the only importer I could actually play and I don't really need to know what's going on to figure out what's going on. You know, I don't need to like know the story or know what they're saying or whatever because I understand the way right. the game works. And, and, and I was like, oh, you know, and I bought it. Then I'd actually had a cartridge, so I could see a cartridge and hold it and put it in there, whatever. But I'm after this, I'm, I have no plans of getting another cartridge. So I'm trying to push it as far as I can without getting cartridges until I run out of memory, and then and then we'll see after that. And uh, my memory is pretty open so far. So I mean, I've been buying you know buying everything digitally, but I haven't really bought any like big games. I'm just buying the indie stuff every week, which we'll talk about and you know as our topic also, but. Yeah, same here. And I feel once Virtual Console finally shows up, it's also going to not take up a whole lot of space. But yeah. maybe if if they do choose to bring GameCube games, I guess that could get kind of hefty. But sure. Well, and if they put yeah. Wii games on there, yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how much the like. Do you remember like what the sizes of the Wii games were like on Wii U? Like, I'm sure like Xenoblade Chronicles was probably like one of the biggest ones. What was that? Probably like 30 gigs, like maybe more. Do you think like download space? Oh, it was twenty. Oh no, I'm thinking. Yeah, it was bigger than that because it was like twenty two gigs. I think is what Smash Brothers was. That's the Wii U game, but I'm talking about like the Virtual Console, like the Wii stuff. You know, like oh, how you could it was buy. Always... Yeah, you could buy the original Xenoblade Chronicles, the Wii one, on there and download it. Like how, okay, learning how I never how, did. So what I the gig know. count was on that? Because that's probably that's got to be one of the biggest downloads of Virtual Console Wii stuff on Wii U. And I would guess that that's probably like twenty gigs, maybe more. I don't know. I don't remember what exactly the number was, but uh, anyway, <laughs> we we got sidetracked from our list. So you did six you did, point five. You, you did five. Your five was DS, right? It's six point five gigs. Xenoblade is Xenoblade yeah. Chronicles for on the, the Wii. Yeah, for the download uh-huh. on the Wii. Oh, I thought it was more than that. 
That's not that's not very much. So yeah, I guess uh, yeah, GameCube wouldn't be in any more than that. I wouldn't think so. Probably won't completely destroy. Probably it. smaller because GameCube games were well, they were on discs that were like one point two gig, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It couldn't it couldn't get any bigger than. But some six. games were multi disc, so there you go. It's true. Yeah. Uh, we're on number six, right? Uh, I didn't do five yet. I didn't do my. Well, five. We're on number five. <laughs> you did your five, and we got distracted. Uh, my number five is your number four, so I guess it's not that far down. Mario Mario Kart Seven is number five for me. Right there, towards the bottom, or towards the top of the bottom, but not too far from the top. Yeah, top top of the bottom. So it's not. It's actually one away from yours. So I guess it wasn't that far down. What's your number six? Got to go back to. I don't know for sure if this was a system seller, but it was strongly factored in it. Me purchasing a Game Boy Advance Super Circuit. Yeah. Yep. Super Circuit. I like Super Circuit. It actually playing it again it, it made it i liked it more this time than i did before like when i first played this it was, i was like oh it's kind of like the first one but then i played the first one for a while and then played that one and i'm like oh man this one was way better than the first one just oh, because yeah. it controls was, so much better this was the first one i offer a uh, multiplayer with one cart while in the portable i guess well it was the first portable mario kart so whatever but yeah it, you could play four players i think everybody had to be yoshi is that right yeah yeah, we, but, yeah, we talked about and, that. And you can use single like, cart, but different colored Yoshis. So that was pretty cool. Um, I did play the shit out of this in spite of the SP not being out yet when it was released. So I played a lot of this sitting outside yeah. in, the dire- or, in the direct sunlight. Or under like a lamp, under some uh-huh. sort of, yeah. I remember uh, my friend, our, our mutual friend Ivan, like in his like spare bedroom, video game room or whatever, he had like the best lamp in there. Like it would it would highlight the Game Boy so well. Like I remember sleeping on the couch in there and I was like, oh man. I'd play like a Golden Sun. I was like, man, this game looks so good under this lamp. It's like you're <laughs> actually out under the Golden Sun. Yeah. It, it would it would uh, light everything up very well. And then I try like Circle of the Moon and I'm like, hmm, it's still dark. <laughs> Even with this still great dark, lamp. But you can yeah. kind of see it. Yeah. But man, how, how cool was this? Like it looked... It was definitely a, a a showpiece for the Game Boy Advance, you know, that this wasn't just a portable Super Nintendo. This had almost PlayStation level like sprite capabilities. Um, yeah. All the crazy rotating sprites within the menu and. Oh yeah, it looked, it looked really it looked really smooth. It was basically like the advanced version of the Super Nintendo game. It's kind of like the same in the same camp where you'd put like Mario Kart DS. Yeah. You know where it's like. Uh, if this this could be like Super Mario Kart two on Super Nintendo, and it's like way beefed up, and like everything looks a lot nicer and all that, you know, it's kind but of yeah, like, yeah. It's like second. But I know we yeah, I know we just talked about it last week, so I don't want to like talk too much about it. But shit, I played it a lot, and uh, it has nostalgic appeal for me for sure. Uh, what's oh wait, I didn't do mine. Uh, <laughs> my number six is Mario Kart Wii. Which okay. I'm sure yours is lower, but because I yeah I understand the uh, the rubber banding and the computer difficulty on that was absolutely insane. But I at the same time I liked the um, I liked a lot of the courses on it. They were they were still memorable to me, and I had a lot of fun playing it. And I liked uh, that Funky Kong was in it, and there were all these other weird new guys. And they brought in like the they brought in the motorcycles, and they brought in like the tricks like that you can do off ramps, which you can still do in eight, except now it's just a jump. But it's still still brought in some stuff that was moved. It was kept in there, so that one's third to last for me. What's uh, what's your number seven? So it's going to sound kind of familiar. Uh, Mario Kart Wii. Yeah, <laughs> I figured. So I played. I mean, I played. Oh, I thought this maybe game a lot. I thought maybe you put it last. I thought maybe you I played. Mario Kart I Wii. played all these games a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, looking at this list is kind of cool because I don't know how many games there are where I couldn't even say with the Zelda games that I've liked all of them this consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a solid franchise, man. And so we, even though it's down here at number seven, I want to say I still played the shit out of it once again. Uh, beat it. I got all the way to one. I got to mirror mode, I do believe. I don't know if I beat mirror mode. Oh, yeah. I beat, it. I beat everything. Thing. It was just really hard. I went through a couple yeah, of controllers it was in hard. the process because <laughs> it was very unfair. It was a ton of fun. It looked fantastic. Um, it had all those different control schemes and control setups. It had online play. Um, yeah, and it well brought in the ranking, like where you could actually, we actually had a number that would change depending on how many you lost or won or whatever. Yeah. So that was a new thing for that one. So what's, uh, so that's seven. Okay. That's my seven, so you say you're seven. All right. I mean, by now everybody knows what my last one, what my number eight is. What's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is uh, Super Circuit, is a Game Boy, is the Game Boy one. Wow, that, that far down, huh? Well, I like that game. It's just, you know, it just plays different. Like I said, I had a hard time getting into the Super Nintendo style of play just because I didn't play the game. Yeah. And uh, this one's a little bit better than that one. So, as you can tell, my last two ones are Super Circuit and then Super Mario Kart. 
because I can't because I can't really play Super Mario Kart very well, so it's hard for me to get enjoyment out of it now. You know, I understand it's a big yeah. thing for starting the series and all that, but I'm talking about games that are like my personal favorite, not necessarily which and ones, ones which ones are the best. I'm just saying nowadays. the ones that I like to play the most is what this list is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, obviously this list. So think is about subject- that before you send the hate mail. Well, this list is subjective. <laughs> send the hate mail, please. This list is subjective. That's why our two lists are different. Yeah, and your final one is then. It's a uh, double dash. Yeah, I figured that, which I which and makes me sad because I really like that game. I liked it too. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Um, it was one of those games that I didn't get into until far after the fact. Uh, I had a roommate at the time that borrowed it from her brother, and so she started playing it, and I think it kind of ignited a little, a little bit of a competitive sort of desire in me to beat it too. If she was going to be beating it, oh and sure. You could have the different files on the GameCube or whatever, so I was able to do my own file for it on my memory card, and uh, it was pretty cool. And um, play the shit out of it. I think I similarly took this one all the way to the mirror mode it was a mirror mode in this one yeah well there's mirror mode but there's also an all race mode where you have to go where you have to do all of them in one sitting which i That's thought right. that was pretty cool i like that actually then you never saw that again but yeah they do a race where it's like all of the different cups and it takes a really long time yeah it does uh, it does it does take a while but there's only 16 cups in this you know it was before they doubled it they start doubling it with the extra retro stuff. But I, yeah, I really like this game. I still play it. I still play it on the GameCube. Like it's, I've just started, I just set up my new studio recording office area in here. I have my, uh, retro systems ready to go. So I can just easily just hit, you know, hit on in the GameCube and it's ready and it's ready to go. And I can just jump in and like play a cup and, and get out of it. And it's a lot of fun. I think it looks beautiful. Like, it looks I mean, great. I, I, like, like, I love the I animation. Like so yeah, it's still I like, yeah, I it, like this game enough that I bought it. I bought it recently. I bought it within the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Because I wanted to own it still. Yeah. And I've booted it up from time to time to play it, but especially now that I have a weight bird, it's really fun to play. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, uh, yeah, there's our, <laughs> there's our extra edition of last week's episode. Another like 20 minutes of Mario Kart talk. I mean, you know, Mario Kart's great. We, we can talk more about it. We probably um, will. Yeah. But <laughs> before we get too carried away, let's, uh, let's head on to the news. News, news, news. Don't snooze or you'll miss the news. And we're back for episode 68 of Nintendo Main Podcast. Yeah, so a lot of stuff happened. We didn't we didn't totally cover all of the financial meeting last week. Well, all we really talked about, I guess, was the NES. Well, I guess we talked about the NES being canceled, but that but that had already been a thing before the financial meeting. We didn't talk any about yeah. the uh, sales or anything like that, but let's talk about that real quick. So um, from what I heard... Uh, Sales wise, and I'm not even sure if this is from the financial meeting or not, but we'll just talk about the sales stuff. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sold like about 45%. That seems like about 45% of people who have Switches got it, which sounds about right. It's It had the biggest opening for any yeah. Mario Kart game, yeah. which you said last week. Yeah. In our podcast, we were talking about how sure. the Wii one was the most successful one. It was the most successful one. But this but one me. has sold the most, I guess, out out the gate. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, four hundred fifty nine thousand. That supposedly that's like a forty five percent attach rate. It, you can tell it's even like one out of two people because you got it and I didn't get it. You know, here we have it right here on the show, even <laughs> half, yep. half and half here. It's like the uh, it's like the Wii U Switch Breath of the Wild divide of olden days from here. Also, uh, I guess they also said like how many Zeldas were sold. Apparently, it's like nine hundred twenty five thousand on Switch, four hundred sixty thousand for Wii U. Now they said uh, they also said that oh, that nine hundred six thousand Switches were sold. So that means that like what like uh, nineteen thousand. There's 19,000 uh, Breath of the Wilds sold above Switches, like more games sold than Switches, which I've seen people talking about online, but this is what I think about it. This is what I think why they sold more Zeldas than Switches, and I did this myself, too, when uh, the Wii came out. I bought the Ze- I bought Zelda the game, bef- I bought the Twilight Princess game before I had the system, because I couldn't find the system. But then I was like, when I find the system, I'll have Zelda. So I think a lot of people might have just went and bought Zelda in the yeah. Switch, hoping that they'll get the system, and they don't have the system yet. Or they've even That's been what given I think. it as a as a gift by people thinking they would have the system by now. Yeah. Or, I mean, well, some people are like, oh, people are doubling up. I think the other way around. I think that people have just bought it, and, you know, expecting that they might, that it might, they may not be able to find it, and they have the game. 
and they're just waiting to find the system. Like I, I did that. Like I did my, that myself for Wii. I expect that people would do that now as well. So that's what I think is going on there. But there was still, uh, I mean, still 460,000 for Wii U. That's pretty good. I don't know what the overall sales for Wii U are, or what the attach rate percentage of that is, but I think that's pretty good for like the I mean, first I think like it's probably a pretty high days. attach rate for anyone that didn't buy a Switch probably bought this game. Bought Zelda for the Wii U. Yeah, Zelda. yeah, other way around also. Yeah, like people who are like, oh, I can't find a Switch or I'm not ready to get one yet or, you know, they but just, I'm a, who were Nintendo fans, they just went ahead and got that one, you know. Got I'm the also Wii U an anomaly as far as this is concerned because I bought it for both. Yeah, you do have it for both. But you but you played the Switch one the most. That's what I meant for the divide before you had two copies of everything. Buying, you know, it's cool to buy two copies of one game. I'm up to three NESs. I have two 3DSs. Yeah, my life's starting to double up. <laughs> Two copies of that uh, Quattro Adventures game. <laughs> Jeez. In case one goes out, because you play it so much, right? Well, I need the Aladdin adapter. Yeah. And then, I'll, then I'll have two copies. I saw I saw an article showing that um, that the Neo Geo games have sold like over 200,000, like yeah. total. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's They're pretty... uh, patting themselves on the back for, to, for releasing them the way they have as individual titles. Well, yeah, and I pat them on the back for, like, just throwing them out there that first week. Like, you, you listen to our episode. I was so excited that they put, like, they threw out, like, four Neo Geo games, like, right on that first week. And I think I bought all of them. That was <laughs> so, really smart of them. That was a smart, that was yeah. smart. Like, same thing with, uh, that was, like, same thing with, like, putting snipper clips, like, on, on on the first day and, like, putting out, like, Fast Racing Neo on the first day. I thought that was, like, a smart thing, too, for people who want to have more games for their system if they got one, you know. It's good to have it on there. Yeah, someone who might not have even normally been interested in that genre of game might buy it just because it's a game to play. For sure. Or someone else that play, uses the system might want to play that game. I'm still, I'm still like on the fence, but I really want to buy that golf game. The golf game is awesome, dude. <laughs> the golf game is great. You should totally it get it. It's only eight bucks. It's only eight bucks, and it totally works well. Like for a golf, like it's basically Mario Golf, but it's more difficult. But it works well. Like the system works very well. Like I can't really think of anything I dislike about it aside from like the music <laughs> or something. What but, the music's lovely. Yeah, well, some of it's kind of that one particular thing. Speaking of Neo Geo, uh, there was an announcement. I have never played this game, but I totally want to get it. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, Gero, Mark of the Wolves. It's a fighting game. It's supposed to be really good. It comes out next week, which is awesome. And also, what else comes out next week on the next day, on the same day is uh, NBA Playgrounds, which there oh, was that soon. Yeah, there was footage shown of it. I watched a video of it. It, it, and you know how I said before, like that I want to be able to play it in 2D mode. It's totally in 2D. Like I watched it, it's just it's straight up NBA Jam. Like there's no camera angles or anything. You're just straight, you know, left to right, four players. Except everybody's like polygon, but it does like the same animations that it did. Except there's ways uh, you can. There's like ways you can get extra points and stuff by certain by doing certain things. But it's very much NBA Jam. Like it feels very much like NBA Jam. Like from what it's I saw, it's only that, so a I'm 20, excited. twenty dollar game. Yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, that, well, I think like three games come out next week, isn't it? That, um, Minecraft and, uh, the Neo Geo game? Cause Minecraft yep. comes out on the 11th also, right? Yeah, and I don't think we ever mentioned it, but it was announced a couple weeks ago that the, how big the maps were going to be in Minecraft. Oh, yeah, no, we didn't mention. How are, how big are they? Essentially, it's, uh, so think of the, uh, the level within the Wii U version as being one map, one full map. It's nine of those. Oh, okay. So it's, you know, just like if you took nine, of the worlds and put them all around in a grid from the Wii U. That's the size of the Switch version, and it's fully portable. I think that's are they the big? biggest the biggest portable Minecraft yet. Oh, okay, because I think the version that was released on the uh, Vita wasn't even that big. Yeah, it's bigger. It's much bigger. Oh, okay, well there it's you go. Not, it's not as big as the PC version because of all the RAM that would require. Sure, but it's a huge. It's a huge. But it is bigger undertaking than the, on the system. Uh huh. It is bigger than the Wii U version, though. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna so get that's it. I, cool. I'm sure, right? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, you know, you, you love to stack up games, and I don't know how many we copies were, of Minecraft you have, but you can always get another one. I have Minecraft for the PC. I have Minecraft for the Xbox 360. I have Minecraft for the Wii U. I have Minecraft for my phone. Yeah, that's too much already. Um. But if you and I were to like figure out a way to stream it in some way, then maybe I would. But we already talked about that with the Wii U yeah. version, and we're both just sitting on that. So 
Well, I yeah. Well, we have a Twitch account, so maybe we can get that going at some point. But there's no voice chat in this one because there's no microphone. So nope. sucky. So that sucks. There's a there's one way that the Wii U one's better. But I just yeah. I still don't really understand Minecraft myself, so that's why I haven't gotten into it. I just haven't. It hasn't really clicked to me to be like, oh, this is something I want to play. It's kind of I don't it's know. It's got a fairly high difficulty curve, I would say. Or- yeah. It can. I mean, I don't know. You know, it just, it's one of those games. It's kind of like got a sort of Breath of the Wild feel or Breath of the Wild borrowed it a little bit from there where it's like you can just totally get fixated on one kind of thing and do that for hours and hours and hours without learning more mechanics. Oh, sure. But you can introduce those mechanics, you know, one little step at a time. The game's vast and there's a lot going on with it, but each of those things is just kind of an incremental upgrade on another thing, so... There is sort of a curve that you can get into this game. And they sort of offer, you know, the tutorial they offer on the console versions is an okay way to sort of introduce you to that. But I still think you learn the most in this game by just losing yourself in it. And uh, But yeah, that's Minecraft. That's more Minecraft talk. Yeah. Well, it, you know, we'll definitely we'll definitely have to do a show about Minecraft. I mean, I think you should get this version, but <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what's it going to come out for? Like 30 bucks or is it going to be like a Switch tax $60 thing, do you think? I don't know if it has a price on it yet. I mean, it's it started out being a $20 game on other consoles and then the Wii U version was 30. So, I imagine the Switch version will also be a premium there'll be a premium tacked onto it. Oh, for sure. Um, so, uh, so the the first DLC stuff for Zelda was detailed this week. Yeah, it was like a real list of things this time. Yeah, there's there's actually some shit on there. Uh, there's a different there's uh, some cool looking armor on there also, as we talked about on the top of the show. But uh, yeah. yeah, let's just go through what let's see what I saw. And I'm looking. This is like straight off the Nintendo website. I'm looking at the same page. I do. Really. Yeah. So Trial of the Sword. Uh, was added on there. I think that's another that that must be another thing involved with the forest. Because yeah, it, it's like what are those things called that have been in all the other games? They're all trials, right? Like where you go through the multiple rooms of. Yeah, well, I mean, and those are isn't it like the well the, the ones that you do already the four like different missions that you do in the secret sacred forest. Yeah, those are already called trials of stuff. So I guess it's like another one of those. Kind of like, sounds like a little bit like that island that we talked about. Like you go in like without any armor, you get like what one, you get like the master sword and that's it. And you got to beat like through all these levels of different guys through different rooms. Sounds kind of like the wolf mode on, uh, on Twilight Princess, you know, like that. So that's, that's kind of cool. You know, that's, that's on there. But it's somehow upgrades your master sword if you get through it. Yeah. It says uh, clear all the trials, 45, 45 rooms in total. And the power of the master sword will be awakened. It will always be in its glowing powered up state. So then it, it's always at 60 instead of 30. So that's cool. But it will still break. I, yeah. I think it will still break just the same. For sure. But that's cool. It will always be at 60, so uh, not just dealing with ancient things and not just within the castle. So second on the list, the Hero's Path mode. Oh, okay. I, th- I think this is really interesting. Yeah, no, th- this sounded cool. It's a new new map feature, shows the path Link has walked through. Oh, yeah, so it shows you, like, where you've been in the past 200 hours of gameplay. That's crazy. I don't even, like I said, I haven't looked at my at where I'm at yet, but that's cool. And it shows you, like, where you've walked around and where you haven't. So it kind of helps you explore places you haven't been to, and that's, like, a really cool addition to the map. I could see myself know, totally may, using that. It may really, like, it'll be a really, like, cool way to sort of relive the game too that I've already played like it'll it'll be like a little rush of nostalgia I think just being like oh and I hung out over here and yeah. shit it took me like a really long time to beat that or I was there for a while then I left oh, sure. went back again and like I especially though yeah that bit, the most obvious feature I especially look forward to oh shit there's like this huge area I've never even been to or you yeah. know I was there once early in the game but I was so weak that I left quickly or I died or whatever. Oh, I don't sure, know if yeah. it shows a record of your deaths too. I think it's I think it's just like a line. Like it, there's just like a yeah, I think it just kind of sh- I expected it to just be like a line through the map like showing like how you went where you so went from one a, place to like another a, or whatever. A, lo- a long exposure of yeah, from above. But it's cool. I mean, that's kind of how I was playing the game already when I just kind of look at the map and I'm like, I don't think I've been over there yet. I'm going to go over by there and like try to walk into that area and see what's over there. So it's kind of like just yeah, adding to that because it was already like you could put little markings saying that you've been there before. But now it'll actually show you where you have been. You'll be like, oh, I never went over there. Why didn't I go over there? So then you can go explore more of it. So that's pretty cool. Seems like a nice, I think it's really nice cool. addition. I've definitely I've played about last I checked. I think I was sitting around a 140. So 
Yeah, I haven't uh, checked since I was at 30. But I did actually start playing it again this week, and I went and beat the Camel Dungeon. Oh, okay. So I did. So I did get back into it for a little bit. So I went. I went and did that, and I went back, and I actually did. There's um. They added. There's a patch to it now. But apparently, there's multiple languages now, so you can play it in Japanese. I know that's awesome. Which man. I, I haven't that... haven't tried that yet. I just heard about it after I was playing. But I did go check out the bowling game, and the bowling game is only 300 now instead of 400 every time you get a strike. So they did lower the price on that. Oh, really? It was 400 on your your version? I thought it was. It's always been 300 on mine. Oh, I thought it was four. Like, because I I, th- I remember getting 400 for strikes. It's always been three for me because it's the gold rupee, and that's the value of the gold rupee is 300. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe it wasn't changed. I thought and I, I thought and it I was have, four. Uh, I have recently checked that out, even after this latest update. But no, I think the audio updates pretty awesome and i think someone online pointed it out it's really only going to be the cutscenes that are affected but still it's cool yeah but whenever your uh whenever your stuff gets recharged it's not going to be like it's just going to be in japanese right where it's like well no 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 you know it's like rivali is oh, right, back right. Oh, wow. you know it'll just be like uh, it'll be in japanese now, so, you, so you hear that yeah. the star fox sounds it'd be cool if you could change it to like foxies or animalies or whatever so it sounds like animal crossing where it's like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean that's that's cool. I like I like that. Um, it's a cool it's a cool feature that totally came out of left field for me. I'm like, what? Well, you know, at least oh, not, they're... not the language I mean, but the hero's path. The language, yeah, I expected to be fixed at some point. Yeah, well, the the language was just people kind of bitched about it. it'd be funny if uh there's like you know there's certain games that like once you start in one language you can't change it back to another language it'd be pretty funny if they did that like where you can't change it on the fly you have to start the start the game over again and that's how you get the different language it'd be pretty hilarious if they did that did that option it'd be kind of like oh yeah well fine we'll do what you want but guess what yeah, you yes. can start over again <laughs> that would be that would be a really funny fuck you way to do it but i know they wouldn't do that but even worse would be if you change a language and it automatically like deleted your file. Yeah, I think yeah. like I think <laughs> well, I think Fire Emblem Awakenings like that. I think if you I think you have to like restart the whole game to change it. I know like some of the Persona games are like that too. Where you can't like do it on the fly. I don't think you can do it in Final Fantasy 15 either. Like I think once you start in Japanese, you have to keep it there. But yeah, there's there's games that do that still. So be glad they didn't do that. So there's there's the hard mode. Um, they're adding that. We already knew there's going to be a hard mode in there. Enemies gradually regain health, so take them out as quickly as possible. That's kind of annoying. All enemies are powered up by one level, so they're so they're like colors change. Like whatever the higher color is, that's what it'll automatically be. That's pretty cool. I was wondering like how they would make it harder. You know, I was like, uh, are just like are, are they going to make your weapons break quicker? Because that would be a that'd be a pain. It'd be a pain in the ass if they did that. Well, if the enemies have more health, you are going to lose weapons more. Yeah. For sure. No, yeah, you're right. If you're fighting as often, so yeah, it, it that is, is true. In that regard. Well, especially like if you hit them, if you hit them a little bit, and then you run away, and they go hide somewhere, or they'll gain their health back. That's pretty. That's annoying. But what about the freaking flying enemies? So you think you would think that they would add more mobs, mobs like not moblins, but actual mobs. Yeah, this this is what we talked about at the very very top of the show as our uh, cold opening. But yeah, one of the pictures on the Nintendo website we're looking at right now. There's a picture of Link, like with his, you know, with the sailcloth and all that, and there's a, mo- a moblin behind him on like a flying thing, on like a on like a raft that has the the you know the goblin heads or whatever they are that float, and it's he's like flying above him. That's crazy. It's not really. But mentioned. it looks as though it looks as though they're not just the balloons. It's the actual octorocks or whatever they are. They're like going to be able to shoot at you. I think. Oh, are they? I think so. So I think not only is oh, he going to be they weaponized just, with yeah. uh, with a uh, bow and arrow, possibly. I don't see any. Most likely. Yeah, I don't see any faces on there though. I'm looking at this picture right now, like zoomed in. I don't see any like octorock faces. The, I, I just see balloons. Up the top right, you see an octorock face on that one. He's looking right at Link. Oh, okay. I guess that it's like his little squid-looking face at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at the bottom of the paragraph on that, it says, uh, look up and you may also find enemies and treasures chests in the sky. Which I, oh, I think maybe on, off to the left in that picture. That yeah, there's tre- another one. Yeah, chest. there's a treasure chest in the sky. That's pretty cool. Some floating stuff. I hope it doesn't like float too high that you can never get to it. <laughs> I hope it like goes through some sort of, you know, goes through some sort of wave where it like you know goes up and down and doesn't completely dis- disappear off the map i don't know or are they or are they going to be mo- moving or are they going to be stationary within the sky These yeah that's platforms. that's what i'm saying like are they floating up are they floating down do they have like a pattern that they go through like kind of like the dragons i would guess yeah. that they probably have a movement pattern that they do is what is what i would guess they all... it seems like the obvious thing to do here is going to be to 
to fire at the Octoroks and uh, cause it to dump the bad guys off of the rafts. Yeah, and that could be fun if there's a, you know, if, of course, if there's like, uh, there's going to be landing damage, I'm sure. So it'd be fun to, to see them fall and, you know, <laughs> perish in that way. It's possible this could make uh, sailing around a little less fun, though. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> if you get attacked a lot. But it is a hard mode, so... You should know. So, you should know what you're getting into, right? If that's what you're. And it doesn't, it doesn't say up. here whether or not uh, you can change it to hard mode with your current save, or if hard mode is it's you have to start all over again. I guess we don't know that. Yeah, I was hoping that it's with your current save, but yeah, like I said before, with the languages, that would be that would be a pretty uh, mean thing to do. But you never know. There's also a travel medallion. It's added. There's a chest with the travel medallion. You can register your current location and fast fast travel to it. Fast travel so to cool. it on the so point you can, on the map. Uh, yeah. Essentially, you can always have one, uh, whatever you're focused on, you can set up a thing right there. So, yeah, you could put one right next to the bowling game and just always be able to go straight to it, even though it's right next to a tower. Yeah, well, really sure. Easy to get to. Yeah. But what, there, there might be something else you enjoy doing, a place you like to go grind. Um, maybe, yeah, put it by the... Uh, Put it right by one of the Moblin things or something, so you can go straight there whenever the Blood Moon happens. Oh, there's sure. A lot of, yeah. There's a lot of different options for it. Or, yeah, you could put it, if you haven't done that, temp, the uh, yeah, Shrine done, Quest. If you haven't done the Blood Moon Temple, you can do it there. We can go right there whenever the Blood Moon's up. Yeah. So it says that uh, you can only register one location using the Travel Medallion. Do you think you'll be able to change them, though, like from one to another? Or do you I think do. It's, I you think, don't think it's just going to be one it, and then that's all there is? I think at any given time, you'll have one waypoint that you can go to, but yeah, you'll only have one. So once you set it somewhere else, the other one goes away. It's how I imagine it'll work. For sure. Uh, and there's also under that, there's some new, uh, there's some new armors. Like, can you get, I guess, do you get them automatically? Or no, there's, yeah. The eight treasure chests placed around Hyrule containing, containing armor themed after previous Legend of Zelda titles. Watch for tips as to the whereabouts. So there's like added, uh, there's some added treasures. There's a Majora's Mask mask, of course. Minda's helmet. The Phantom armor looks awesome. Like that's it does. That's like a, well, that pretty much kind of sells the DLC to me. I'm like, mm, yeah. I wonder what it does that's special. Like if it's just really highly resistant, or if it's uh, well, it looks freaking awesome. If it's awesome. got a, something, because <laughs> I mean, obviously looking at it, you wouldn't think stealth. Yeah. With that, but maybe it is a stealthy thing. Who knows? Maybe because you know because you had to use stealth when you were dealing with the Phantoms in the DS games. You can also uh, get a tingle outfit, which I hope that that changes your sackcloth into like balloons, <laughs> yeah. Instead of that, so you can just float around with balloons like Tingle does. That's a very uh, form-fitting uh, outfit for Link. I hope he. I hope he controls and a like. Concept design. <laughs> yeah, I hope he controls like. Uh, I hope he controls like Tingle does in the Hyrule Warriors game. If you ever played as him, he kind of looks <laughs> like he has little creeper heads from Minecraft on the straps of his backpack. I, uh, creeper heads. Yeah, that's what it kind of looks like. Oh, but, yeah, because he has that weird no, weird snake design or whatever. But, you know, Tingle confirmed he's going to be in the game now, <laughs> even though you're going to have to be him. Because you always wanted to well, dress like Tingle. For the people who love Tingle, they can. So you got to wonder, are they like, I mean, are these just aesthetic or do they have something special about them? Like maybe Tingle. I'm sure they have something. Maybe Tingle's helps you collect more rupees or something like that. Or oh, maybe sure. It's like, uh, you can sell maps to people as, as Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> you can sell maps to the town people. Yeah, how cool would it be if there was like a, uh, there were like side quests for each of these specifically to the armor where you had to do something like maybe yeah. as a fa- as a phantom you had to go hang out in a tower and uh keep people from getting to the top <laughs> you have to yeah you basically have to uh get possessed by zelda or, or keep people from getting to zelda pretty much. maybe when you wear the midna helmet you can ride on wolf link oh yeah that'd be cool uh, there's also a korok mask which is hidden in a treasure as well um it shakes whenever links near near a korok so it's kind of like uh it's like the uh, stone of agony from the from the old game yeah. you know Kind of like helps you, will help you find, uh, the rest of the Korok. So that's kind of, I figured that would be in there somewhere, you know, some sort of Korok tracking thing. So I've you never can go tried find taking, the 900 of them, or whatever. I've never tried taking a picture of a Korok, or I have pictures of a Korok, but I've never tried like using that to find the seeds. You, you can't. I, I tried you can't. it. Cause I, cause so, that, so this yeah. is like, this was purposefully like, all right, well, here's that, here's that, since you can't do it on the Sheikah slate, here it is yeah. as a mask. Yeah, there's not, there's not a Korok tracker. I saw that because that was, when I first started finding Koroks, I started taking pictures of all of them with my camera until I ran out of film. So I had to just start deleting them. But I just, you know, was like, oh, there's one. I, so I was collecting pictures of all of them. And that's before I realized there was like 900 of them. But yeah, I learned pretty early that you can't track them through that because I had so many pictures of them, unfortunately. But yeah, it's basically like that. It's like an addition to the Sheikah Slate to now you can track them. 
I definitely think this uh, DLC is going to make me play the game more. You know, it's going to make me go back to it and want to complete some more quests and mess around them more. I think so. I like it. I think it's. I think it's cool. I think it's. Uh, right now, I haven't really been playing much. You know, I'll still pop it on every couple of days and mess around, but I don't know, I've been my uh, focus is elsewhere nowadays. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, the one curse of the podcast last week. There was a. Uh... <laughs> The little thing called the new new 2DS XL got la- got uh, mentioned or got announced. New Nintendo 2DS XL. Yeah, uh, this is. I think you like this more than I do. I'm not really into the color scheme. I think it kind of looks like the Nerf protectors that you would put on the uh, that you put on the Wii U gamepad or like your 3DS. Looks a little weird. Like it looks a little like foamy at the top. But uh, and I, and I'm not really a big fan of like the blue black color scheme on it, like the light blue. But it's uh, almost like a sea foam. Yeah. Or like yeah. sea green. I mean, is it is it made so you can like throw it at the wall and it's okay? Because the 2DS was supposed to be kind of like clunky, so you know, more for kids, so you can kind of like I know, drop it or whatever. That's the weirdest part about this whole thing. Um, but if you if you remember, so yeah, so the 2DS was like marketed as being the option for children. It's a cheaper not version. Just, no not 3D, just no 3D, that, Yeah. No right, flip. Just, no flip case. Right. Not just so that it would be more durable, but because. The 3D supposedly could be bad for developing eyes. Yeah. Um, so they just took it out, and there you go. You have a, a child-friendly 3DS. Yeah. So, like, the fact that they've made a, this other version that's, like, a premium version of that, it's, like... It's weird, right? <laughs> it's very weird. Is it, like, you know, well, the 2DS came out a few years ago. Is this for the same market of kids that are just a couple years older now, and they're ready to... Uh, but they're still not quite ready for a 3DS, so let's get them this one, or... Well, it's... You know, a, what? Yeah. Did they see it as a cash grab, you know? But here, remember... Do you remember when the uh, the original DSi XL came out? It yeah. was being marketed as for, like, people that couldn't see as well, that needed a bigger screen. It was almost being, like, marketed as, like, the elderly DS. Oh, I don't remember. Like, the, the DSi, like, totally, I just never got one. Not the one, DSi, never really, but yeah. the DSi XL. Yeah, I'm saying, I, I didn't really... Yeah, I didn't really pay attention to either of those because I. Well, I remember that coming out and in, in, like in, my DS so, Lite so much, and then so many people being, you know, like, well, hey, I want the bigger screens. Like, I think bigger screens are great. I even though I can see just fine, <laughs> I want bigger screens. Oh and well, so, yeah, like, yeah. They, then Nintendo realized, oh shit, like people like the bigger console. Like that's a thing that everybody likes. This isn't just something we're going to sell as, you know, being for people with impaired vision. So uh, they, it became a thing where there are special editions of that version of the console and stuff because they are marketing it to everybody. So yeah. this one already is kind of how I feel. It's like the 2DS, you know, let's market as this, but let's see, you know, for the kids, but let's see how it actually takes off. If it shows more of a mainstream appeal than we're expecting, then we're ready to roll out this guy, this 2DS XL, which – for sure. What it's fifty bucks less than the three DS XL. Yeah, it's everything a, about it's the same, other than the, yeah. it doesn't have the three. Well, what I thought, what I was thinking maybe is like you know since you know the new three DSs are the only ones that can use like do the Super Nintendo downloads and all that. I think it was just like a, a new version of the two DS that can do that as well because if you buy the regular two DS, you kind of like you can't get like the Virtual Console, uh, Pixel Perfect, uh, Super Nintendo stuff. Or you can't get the stuff that was made just for new 3DS, but you can now with this new 2DS XL. And maybe and that's what they're the going for. Amiibo support. Yeah, it has the Amiibo support the also. And it has like the extra, you know, the extra an- analog nub no. thing and like the extra buttons on the top as well. So it's basically like, yeah, all the, all the bells and whistles of the new 3DS XL except not 3D and foamy, I guess. <laughs> and this one actually has two screens because the 2DS was just one screen with a bezel around it. Well, yeah, they were just, there was no, yeah, there was no, like, uh, what do you call it, no clam. I didn't, like, no clam right. show. but it I was actually set. just one solid screen that was, like, divided into two screens. This one is actually two screens, and they are supposedly really nice. Um, I do wonder, like, you know the whole the difference between the um, I, is it IPS and TFT panels or whatever on the 3DS XL or the new 3DS XLs? Oh yeah, I don't, can, yeah like, I don't know. Where it's always like sort of like a grab bag if you don't know what kind of screens you're going to get. Like I wonder if they're going to do the same with the 2DS XL or if it's going to all be like the brighter screens. If they all have the brighter screens, that becomes a, a selling point on its own for people to pick this console up. Yeah. Well, I would think it, it should be since it's like the new whatever. The new thing that they're coming out with. I think that it's, you know, I would agree with you. The the model they show in the video for the uh, that they're releasing, like that color scheme, I like it. Okay, it kind of looks like one of my like custom Game Boys I put together. 
But uh, I don't like the weird texture on the top. I agree yeah. with you there. But uh, they, there was one shown. Well, there yeah, was the, one that was shown. The, the slime the, one does look great. The slime yeah. one looks really cool. I actually and thought, then, yeah, I, did, I didn't know that the 2DS XL was a thing. So when I saw that picture of the slime, I thought it was like a phone case. I'm like, oh, I want to get that because <laughs> I just saw it somewhere. And, uh, and then I found out later. Because you you told me about it, like you texted me about it, and I was like, I hadn't heard of that. And then I looked it up, and I was like, Oh yeah, that. I thought that was I thought that was phone case. But yeah, that one looks it, cool with the metal. It looks really cool. And so I mean, this is where they might get me, even though I'm like pretty resolute at this moment that I don't want to buy one of these. I mean, shit, I already have two 3ds's. I don't need a third one. But I don't know, man. Something about it. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. This isn't something I'm gonna buy right away. This is something I'm gonna sit on. But then again, what is this gonna be like? Hard to get a hold of? Is this gonna be like are people gonna be whipped into a frenzy over getting a hold of this guy? Or yeah, like the uh, like the ninety nine dollar Black Friday one, which was for only Black Friday, <laughs> which I should have figured out. But I thought that it would just be the new price of the 3ds. You know, that's why you'll never see that one again. But yeah, I don't know. Um, is it? I don't. Is the slime one actually concer- confirmed for America? I thought that was only a Japanese. I think release. it is, and also the uh, there's a European one that's uh, orange and white that looks really cool. That uh, I, I was thinking about. I got on Amazon uh, UK or Amazon EU or whatever it's called today, and they're adamant. You know, it will not ship to the US. So even if I bought it, I think it's region locked. Oh okay. Oh well, that yeah, you know, that sucks. Yeah, so I'm not. I, it looks cool, but you know, whatever. It would just be a yeah, just be a just another overpriced, just another toy. collector's item, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So um, let's uh, let's go to the releases real quick for this week, and then we'll jump to jump to what we're playing. All right. Because I think I think I covered all the news. Unless there's anything else that I that you think I might have missed. Oh wait, no. Hold on. Hold on. There's the rabbit in the room, or the well, Freudian slip. I was gonna say the elephant in the room, but the rabbit <laughs> the rabbit in the room. So Kotaku is uh, jumping on the whole Rabbids Mario RPG rumor train, and they're saying that that's a real thing too now. Just recently, IGN even reported on it like it was fact. So, And, like, I read reading it, like, it seems, like, so ridiculous that it's it still seems not real. Because they're talking about Mario and Luigi having laser guns in the game. Like, that's that sounds like something that won't happen. Have you, did you read any of that or see any of that stuff? Mainly I saw, yeah, I saw the headline. I didn't really read into it too much because... I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, um, why do they? Why do they have guns? I, I don't know because I guess because rabbits have to be shot with guns because there was like a light gun game for the Wii that had guns. I don't know. But this was originally reported by uh, our friend Laura Kate Dale, so you know. <laughs> I thought it was Emily Rogers, or maybe it was just both. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, but it it's, was one of those things I was hoping that she was just wrong about. But yeah, apparently Kotaku is saying that that they're correct on that as well. I mean, whatever, like whatever, just. <laughs> Shit all over Mario. Who cares if you, it's a good game? Because maybe it could be a game that really like lampoons the Mario series in a way that the R- the RPGs have already been trying to do. But let's just take it a further level with these creepy ass rabbit looking things. Well, I'm just kind of wondering because like Ubisoft, you know, I don't really consider them they're a good like, RPG like maker <laughs> company. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're saying uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, rumored crossover RPG from Ubisoft and Nintendo, will reportedly release either this August or September for Nintendo Switch, according to Kotaku, who received art assets for the game. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle will feature, will feature turn-based combat, local co-op for two players. So, I mean, that could be cool, I guess. It says it'll have uh, Mario, Luigi, Pizza, and Yoshi, as well as four rabbits dressed up as those characters. <laughs> in the art provided to Kotaku, Mario and his pal- pals are seen armed with guns that fire laser beams. As we were saying earlier, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd if be willing it's, to, uh, to try. If Intelligent Systems is involved with it, and it's like a Mario and Luigi type thing, or like uh, I forget as because uh, it isn't Intelligent Systems that do Mario and Luigi; they do Paper Mario. But if it's like uh, if it's like those style games. If they have those companies in there, I'm blanking on the company that made uh, Mario and Mario and Luigi right now. But if they have them in on it, working on it, I'm totally down for it. I like turn-based RPGs. If this is if this is good, then awesome, you know. But it still seemed like such a like such a weird thing that Alpha I don't Dream? know. Alpha Dream, yeah, yeah, you're right. Good, good, good one. Um, yeah, yeah. If they're if they're in there, then uh, if they're working on it, then awesome. Then uh, then maybe I'll have some faith in it. But who knows? Maybe we'll get it. I mean, if we get into September and August, it's only a few months away. Well, I mean, there's not a. I guess there's I am Setsuna, but you know, let's get another RPG. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I love RPGs. More RPGs, the merrier. Um, there's also uh, somebody on NeoGaf thought that they found some sort of. 
thing online that Nintendo marked for a possible direct next week. I don't know if this is necessarily news, but somebody, somebody said that, that they thought there was going to be direct next week. I think it's too early, but whatever, the, whatever they saw before for that last one, like the same thing happened again, that yeah. like a day was marked or like something was marked in next week. I mean, so, I wouldn't doubt you know. that they're going to have at least one more direct before E3. Yeah. And are they, is it, is it or is it not confirmed that they're not doing a traditional press conference at E3? Uh, they're not. Yeah. Then that was confirmed. They're definitely, they're not doing a breast com, a breast conference. They're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> they already did the breast conference. Yeah. <laughs> HD Rumble a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not doing a press conference. They're doing another direct, I guess. So, yeah, that was confirmed craziness. But, yeah, they, that's fine. I mean, I like those. I like their little press things that they do. Or yeah, I like, I like the directs. Have, they'll do, like, the um, extended preview of maybe Odyssey, like they did uh, Zelda last year. Yeah, that'd be great. It was like, only Odyssey, and then it's not only Odyssey. Right, <laughs> that's what happened last last year. But it ends up just being a bunch of Kirby games and uh, freaking rabbits, ra- rabbits RPG. Yeah, well, rabbits will have to be there, right? If it's really happening early in the fall, yeah, cool. It's cool how close we are to uh, to E three. I mean, yeah, E three is only a month away, so we will cover it as best as we can. Maybe our correspondent, uh, John Nitter, will be <laughs> will be able to get there and and give us some some info. Repping the Great. sharp ass T shirt. Yeah, let's take a quick break, and then we'll talk about what's released and what we've been playing, because they're kind of in the same thing. Okay. All right, be right back. came out this week the was a tuesday release uh tumble seed came out this tuesday it did um also uh there was a, the blazing was it blazing star yeah yeah uh, the the shoot 'em up yeah neo geo shoot 'em up came out on tuesday instead of a thursday i thought that was pretty crazy i haven't seen anything releasing for thursday on switch so I guess maybe this week they do Tuesday, even though like uh, the next Thursday is supposed to be like when NBA Playgrounds and like all that stuff Minecraft come out. Mm-hmm. Minecraft, it, even though yeah, that and the and the Myro of the Wolf, whatever, all that stuff's supposed to come out on Thursday next week. So I don't know, but yeah, the two two big games, or well, two sort of big games, whatever. Uh, I got Tumble Seed. It's uh, I don't know if you've watched. Have you watched the trailer for that game on the, on the and, Switch? Uh, it's pretty hilarious. Like how they're like. It's the roguelite of whatever, and then it's like, and it's the ro- and it's like, it's the Dark Souls of seed games. Like, there's all these like, funny, <laughs> there's these funny quotes on there, which I think they're, I hope they're trying to be funny because I think they're pretty hilarious. Where it's like, uh, yeah, just going through all the things that people say about like every game that it's like the Dark Souls or something or this the roguelike, whatever. Yeah, it's like a, it's sort of a roguelike thing. You start off, you start off as a seed in a town. And um, you basically, I ended up purchasing this. It was fifteen bucks. It looked, you know, I'm cool with indie games. I want to try it out. But uh, you start as a seed in this town, and you kind of like you use both of the analog sticks to propel yourself forward. But uh, by pushing up and down on the left or right side, you kind of like tilt it from one side to another. And there's a level bubble like in the middle, so it kind of shows you like how far to the left or the right you are. But uh, this is a game that I kind of wish had a uh, motion control on it. I mean, as an option. You know, with the with the Joy Cons working the way they are, I kind of wish you could like just kind of balance it back and forth and move the seed like that instead of just hitting up and down on the on the analog sticks. Whether it works better or not, I'd like to try it. You know, but you get different you get different types of seeds like as you go through the game, and each like level that you're trying to go through like is all completely randomly generated. It so like if you die and come back, it'll be different. The, the all the like the holes and bad guys and stuff will be different on each th- on each playthrough. So that's kind of interesting. It's uh, I'm actually I'm not very good at it, so I've kind of had a hard time getting into it. But I tried. I, I played it for like probably like an hour or so today. Like uh, I really like the music. The music's really good on it. It looks really pretty. It's it, I guess it hasn't really fully hit hit for me yet, but I'm still trying it. Did you? Yeah, I, w- I was interested in trying it out, but I didn't really know much to what to expect. From it, and I also did just buy Mario Kart and um, whatever that other. I can't remember the name of that game, even though I bought it. Kamiko. Kamiko, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we'll talk about Kamiko in a minute. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, no, I, I got Kamiko too. I'm fully interested in purchasing uh, this game if it's Tumble Seed, if it's good, because I it supposedly has the best use of um, 
the HD rumble apart from one two switch. Yeah. Well, yeah, you definitely feel it. No, uh, you feel the seed run rolling from one side to another. I don't know if it's. I mean, it, once again, that's like a. But that supports your thought that it'd be cool if it was. You could just tilt it and feel the marble rolling inside. Yeah. Right. Like it, I feel. I feel it. I feel like it's really a missed opportunity to not have motion control in there. Maybe they just didn't want to have it. But you know, this the system is totally capable of it. Like well, I kind of wish it was in there. I think it might be a little more interesting. If it could you, always be patched do, in. Yeah, if you could do it motion controlled. I don't know. I, I I think I might be a little bit better on it if I could tilt it instead of. I would just like to see somebody try it. I know, like, people so are you really... essentially avoiding things as you move up. Is that how it works? Yeah, you're avoiding things. And there's a specific seed that can get spikes, or you can collect spikes to, that will be added to your seed. And if you roll into characters, where, well, you roll into bad guys with the spikes, you can kill them like that. Okay. So you can't attack some guys. I only have three, I only have three uh, seeds right now. But I think you might get more as you go through. But I'm only like in the, I think I'm in like the second level. But I think I did find a warp at one point, so I might be a little bit farther. But yeah, it just like goes up and you just go through different, you go through different, uh, different things and you try to like plant. There's like little, uh, diamond shaped things on the, on the board that you can plant like trees on and that'll kind of cl- create like a checkpoint for you. So when you die, you'll come back to that. So it's not like, it's not like where everything will completely reset when you die like most rogue type games. But I mean, it, it, the, the level will change, but you won't like not have anything. You won't like lose all your extra seeds and all that. So yeah. I'm still kind of, yeah, I'm still trying to kind of get my head around it, but it's an interesting, cool. I like these, I like these little indie games. It's only 15 bucks. It's not that bad. I bought that. I ended up buying that in Kamiko this week. Kamiko came out last week. We briefly mentioned it, but we both bought that game. So let's talk about that yeah, one yeah, for a minute. It's five bucks, man. Like I could, it was really easy to talk myself into buying a $5 game. That's the cheapest game. Yeah. Right. It's the cheapest game that's come out so far. Yeah, and I, and, uh, and even if it only has a couple of hours of play, if it's a fun game for five bucks and it warrants like multiple plays, playthroughs for high score, or I don't know if that really has high scores in it, but yeah, kind of, well, I guess speed running even. Yeah. I mean, it does time. Yeah. It does time how long you put, you go through the stage. There's combo. It te- keeps track of your combos. So maybe yeah. you could go back for like higher combos. Well, it has an interesting, it has an interesting mechanic to it where like you sort of have a magic meter kind of. You have like you have like your health meter, you know, with the which is these little diamonds, little red diamonds, and you can upgrade that as you go through the game. You can find like you know big red diamonds that give you an extra one, and you, you get an extra one every time you find a boss. Also, but um, there's also like a magic meter type thing, where like every time you hit a guy, every time you hit a guy, you get like one, you get like one point, and if you hit another guy, you get like two, and it builds up like as you combo, so you'll end up getting like a lot more later, like which you'll have to do later when you have to collect magic. But you use you use these points to open doors. You use these points to like basically like find those little gates, little Japanese gates that like uh, become save points. Like after you find those, you have to find four of those in every in every stage, and then that'll open the pathway to the boss, and then you can fight the boss. But uh, and actually, I had to go all the way through the whole game before I figured out that you had a special move. Like, have you figured that out yet? Uh. Uh-uh. So you have a special move if if you hold the button to um, use your sword. If you're playing as a sword character, there's three different characters. There's a there's a sword there's a sword girl, the arrow girl, and there's a sword and shield girl. I played I played all the way through as a sword girl. I just started playing as the arrow girl, but I'm, I haven't played the sword and shield yet. I'm wondering how I'm wondering how that works. Maybe you can like block, but it's a shorter shorter sword. But if you hold your sword button, your guy will start will start glowing you, and you'll do sort of like a spin attack, like you know like Zelda. And uh, spoilers, you have to use that to beat the final guy of the game, and that's how I figured out how to do it because it never told me oh. how to do it. <laughs> never, never told me I how think, to do it in the whole game, and I had to look up what to do because I, I think if out I how read to correctly in the description, I think the third character with the sword and shield, I think they essentially are kind of a hybrid of the other two that they have melee, like close range attack and sort of a projectile attack. Oh, okay, yeah, because the I've noticed a major difference. They throw the shield like Captain America or something. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, um, because I've noticed that, yeah, with the arrow, like, because I went through all the way you have to get right in there with the sword, and I like that because it kind of reminded me of Zelda. Soundtrack's really awesome on this one, too. Like, there's some really cool, yeah, really cool songs And in it's it. based off of uh, Shinto or Shintoism. Oh, is, is like, that is that where all the uh, existential stuff comes from? I, actually I think made so. A, it's supposed to be, and I, and, I, and I don't know a lot about it, but I read a little blurb about What's about it says like whatever. it says transcend it says transcend trans what do you call it talks about like transience 
in there. Right. It's something to do with, yeah, with keeping the past connected to the present somehow, I think is like kind of a layman's way of describing it. Because they kind of call you, they refer to you as that, as like their transients or whatever. Well, you're like shrine or, yeah, there's there's a specific tile for each of the three characters. Like they're like shrine goddesses or something like that. Funny, They are like chosen by the gods to be whatever their role is. Funny thing, uh, I've I've been posting pictures of Kamiko on Twitter, and uh, one of the designers from the game has liked all of them. So, oh, cool! It's pretty awesome. I mean, all of his uh, he's Japanese. It's a Japanese game, so a lot Have of his twi- it? so a lot of his Twitter is a uh, is and a lot of his um, Twitter account is in Japanese. But um, I looked him I looked him up, and he, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the designers of the game. Like he has a uh, you know, there's a trailer for the game on his on his uh, website. You know, it says it even says like the name of uh, what is it? Uh, High, Fly High Works has has that on there too. But uh, yeah, he's the guy that worked on it. But he's a, uh, you know, when you when you tweet stuff through the Twitch, it'll automatically hashtag some stuff. If you okay. notice, like it'll automatically hashtag Nintendo Switch on everything. It does. And uh, for this one, it also automatically hashtags Kamiko. <laughs> Kamiko as the title. Yeah, it it automatically hashtags Kamiko as well. Cool man. On there, well, so someone's. Keeping an eye on that, I mean. So I, I posted like four, I think I posted like two or two or three, I, I posted a few stuff from it. And uh, and the guy, one of the developers, he's liked all of my posts. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I posted po- four, four things. And he's, and, and he had, uh, he liked, he liked three of them, I guess. But he'll get around to liking the other ones, I guess. Maybe, but, if you didn't fuck it up. <laughs> well, I, I did the, oh, well, I, I also spelled it wrong. Probably why. You Trying spelled to, Kamiko wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I spelled existential wrong. <laughs> that's, that's probably why. He'd, it's hard to type shit out on the on the Switch. Let me you tell you. You put a, C, a CKS instead of an X. No, I, I put like an I. And, and like X I, versus Sever. It's like X's <laughs> and, and Seal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I guess he didn't like didn't get that joke because it was spelled wrong. But, uh, but, yeah, I tweeted some stuff and he liked it. So, But, yeah, I played through the whole game. I played through the whole game today. Took me about... An hour and 18 minutes, I think, was my total time on it with the one character. But then I started playing it again as the arrow person. And I, and I see myself playing through it as the extra characters. Cause in the main, in the main menu, there's like a question marks at the bottom. So maybe you unlock something if you beat it as everybody. This game so. reminds me a lot of, uh, the old Gauntlet games on NES. It actually, yeah, it reminded me of like kind of a mixture of like, uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, uh, I could see some gauntlet in there. It kind of reminds it's, it, it's the constant generation of enemies and kind of how they like uh, move at you, like yeah. a bunch of ants or well, whatever. Like, it reminds me of like, like uh, it reminds me of like bullet hell shooters, also like yeah. like shoot 'em ups. Because well, the, bo- the first boss battle definitely felt like a bullet hell. Well, yeah. Well, there's a lot of I yeah. I spent a lot of time like weaving in between bullets, and later as you get later in the game, the the guys the bad guys can shoot bullets at you as well. But it reminded me of stuff like Ikaruga or whatever where I'm like focused on because you have you know have you have your life meter but you don't really there isn't like you can't you don't get like potions or any way to like reheal reheal yourself aside from like cutting grass or like destroying pots and stuff like that. Yeah. There's only so much extra life you can refill for yourself. So I you know I you have to dodge everything. If you don't dodge everything, you know, you won't win. Cause it, cause you lose like one hit point, like per whatever. So I found myself dodging around stuff and it kind of reminds me a lot of like, you know, old like Gradius, like those games or like Ikaruga or like those old like shoot 'em up type stuff. Yeah. The, uh, the graphical style, like kind of how it's like the old school. It, it, it reminds me of, uh, did you ever play Sorcery? It's like an iPhone game. No. It was made, it was like made by the same guys who did, uh, I think, it, I think it was made by the same guys who did Sound Shapes. Or they they worked and worked with them. They, there's a game Sound Shapes on PS3 where like you move around and you're you're like a ball and di- di- different different stuff triggers depending on how you play the game. It's really cool actually, and you can actually write your own songs by creating levels in that game as well. But there's uh there's like characters from from that game in there. It's a uh, yeah, it's called a uh, sword. It's called Sword and Sorcery. It's a uh, Super Brother Sword and Sorcery. Um, there's a game that I that I played on. Uh, iPhone like that. And some of the backgrounds, like the way they're drawn, like the way the style is or the bitness of it and all that, but like modern, kind of reminds me of that game. But it looks really, it looks really pretty. It looks, it sounds really good. You know, it's a lot of fun to, it's a lot of fun to play. There's basically like two, there's like two buttons to use your sword pretty much. And like all the other buttons are pretty much to dash, like to run. So yeah, and dashing is super important. Like you figure that out pretty early on. Yeah, and there's all and there's stuff where like you have to grab, you have to like grab a ball or a key or something and carry it from one point to another without getting hit, and you can't attack anybody while you're doing that. So there's that like stuff like annoying, that. 
that's that's also kind of like, bullet helly. You know, you can't you run can't, either. Yeah, right. You can't set the item down, take care of enemies, and pick it back up. Like once, yeah, you set it down, that pretty much counts as like getting hit or losing it. Well, one one trick that I learned about that towards the end of the game is that if you know like how like you go by the guys and like all the guys reappear when you get there. Yeah. If you like don't kill all of the guys before you leave and come back, they won't like reappear because they'll still be like if you leave a couple of them still alive, so it'll make it a little bit easier. You try to. Oh, that. I see what you mean. So yeah. yeah, it's like each each pack of enemies won't regenerate until they're all gone. Yeah, it won't it won't regenerate until they're all gone. So you could like kill like half of them and then there's and then like it'll make it a little bit easier to dodge around instead of killing all of them which i was doing i was like trying to clear a path and then i came back and they would all come back i realized later that i could just like kill part of them and then they wouldn't like fully all come back well i've only beaten the first boss but i thought it was pretty cool how that was kind of a puzzle it was a puzzle to beat that oh boss. yeah and actually yeah i thought that I, I thought he was kind of like the hardest boss out of all of them was that first one. Just because I had a hard time getting out of his way when he was trying it to It took me the, several tries. Yeah, yeah when he was hitting the switches. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool game. Oh, yeah, what I like is, like, when you find, um, when you're, like, looking through pots and you find, like, a health, you find, like, a heart, you know, to refill your health bar, you can leave it there and it'll never disappear. Like, I thought that was really impressive. You know, like how, like, old, you know, old, like, Zelda games where you find a heart and, like, you know, the heart will, like, go away if you don't get it, like, within, like, 30 seconds or something. Yeah. In this game, they'll stay there forever. So you can, like, come back and get it later, like, when you need it. Like, that's what I used to do. That's what I, it reminds me of, like, uh, the old Doom game, like, from the 90s. I used to do that. Or, like, old first-person shooter games in general. Where like you find like a health a health pack and you don't need it yet, but you remember where it is on the map, and then you come back to it later when you're like almost dead, and you're like, oh, I'll go back and get that health pack. That's kind of how I played this too. I thought it was cool that your health doesn't like disappear. The stuff on the board that you collect, it won't go away, so you can come back and get it later. But yeah, you should uh, definitely play through the rest of it. It's a it's a fun. I game. I plan on it, man. It's fun, and uh, it just the more more of these little games I get on the Switch, the more I'm loving the console because of how quickly you can. You know, go between games and yeah, jump from one thing play to styles and yeah, and you can't really burn yourself out on something if you have something else to jump over and play. And it's nice, like this game just fills, you know, scratches a different itch, so to speak, of type of gameplay. And I'm still playing through uh, Wonder Boy. I mean, I've slowed my roll on that one a little bit, but did you make it to the final level? I've gotten pretty far in the final part where yeah, it ramps like, it ramps up a lot when you get there. I thought it got a you're lot. You're talking about a lot harder. Spoiler spoiler alert or whatever, but you're talking about the the level where you have to keep switching forms. Yeah, and you go through like yeah, that's pretty hard. So that's far. the final I've, level. Yeah, yeah. It, I thought the difficulty into it, ramped but... up a lot when I got there, like because. Well, you want to, you need to get like all the legendary armor for that, you know, like it's, it's good to find the art legendary armor that'll help because then when you switch forms, like it'll, it'll stay the same. You won't have to like change it every time you do it. But if you have that, um, if you have that suit from, uh, from whatever you found that I couldn't find, like with the bird that we talked about, if you have that, shouldn't that bring you back to life after you die? That's what it's supposed to do. Or at oh, least really? it, it did in the original one, yeah. Maybe that, I didn't have it equipped. Yeah, I was saying that's why I thought that I needed it, because from looking at, like, old game facts about the original Master Quest game, or Master Quest, Master System game, it said, uh, it basically said that, like, if you had that, it would bring you back to life every time you died, so it made the game a lot easier, or made that next part a lot easier, and I'm like, well, fuck, that's why I can't get through it. Cause so I it's never like got you always thing. have one potion, pretty much, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you have the, you always have a fairy. Is the idea. So you should try it. Try with that, with with what you got there, and that maybe that'll help you. How far How far have you gotten? Have you like gotten it through all the forms? Like, have you made it all the way to Hawkman in that final area? Uh, no, I wasn't Hawkman. I was. Um, I think I got killed when I was Lion Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so I, I got remember... pretty far, but I got to a part where like there were phantoms and ninjas at the same time, and that's when I got hard. Yeah, yeah, that part sucks. I would die in that part multiple times every time. Actually, what I did. Well, I mean, the, the way that I beat it is I basically saved enough money to buy as many, like, potions as I could. Yeah, I need to figure out where to go to buy potions because I have a ton of money. Yeah, they're actually, um, they're in the Mouse Man level, right before the boss that you get to on my, as Mouse Man, if you, want, okay. if you want to find them. There's a, there's a place where you can buy, you can buy two there, I think, at once, but they only let you buy two. But I bought two and I got a third one from the, uh, from, like, from like, the roulette thing. Yeah, the, when you when you die, so I wouldn't. You'll still get one randomly from enemies too. Yeah, you can get Very it from enemies randomly. also. So I had three from that, and then I went in there with three, and I made it three. I made it through. I think I only had, I think I still had like one left over. But that's what I would always die in that part that you're talking about with the ninjas and the 
And I got there yeah. without using a potion, so I it's mean, awful. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I I did too. It's just when I got there, that was when I would die, so I needed an extra potion. And there's some like weird mechanics with the bosses on that game. If you noticed, like it kind of has like where you get hit and you just can't do anything until you hit the ground. Like your character just kind of like floats around. Oh yeah, I hate hit when by you the like, boss. When you get hit by an enemy and you start like bouncing up in the air for a little while. Yeah, at least it doesn't continue to take your life away. There's like other games that would do that. So at least it only takes your life away one time, but still you have no control of your character until you hit the ground. That really reminded so really me annoying. of uh, yeah. fucking Noah's Ark, the Wisdom Tree game, Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> the one where you stack the animals? Yeah, because you, you would take damage like that and that where you would just like bounce, 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 bounce if you kept hitting things. But I do believe it. Kept taking away your health. Your, yeah, uh, no, I've played games like that that where you, you had just, a where they tab- corner you and just tablet. keep getting mm-hmm. you keep losing shit and it would be so annoying and I, I mean I yeah like NES games that I I can't think of any particular offhand but I remember playing ones that are like that and at least this I mean the the benefit of is that is at least it doesn't continue to drain your health because if it did then I would love would have like thrown the controller and said like fuck you <laughs> to the <laughs> game you know and like rage quit it or whatever. But thankfully, it's it's only you just kind of be like, okay, I'm just gonna get pushed around for a while. But at least I only lose like one part of my health. I just gotta wait till I land and then try to not do it again. You know, it's kind of how you have to look at it. But it's an older game. But but yeah, I'll beat this in Kamiko eventually. Uh, I plan on playing them. Yeah, you should definitely. They're both uh, they're both short games. You know, so you can get through them pretty quick. Yeah, I thought about that today because like I played like I was saying, uh, I played Tumble Seed for a while yesterday, and I played it today too, and I was like. Uh, I was like playing that for a little bit and, I, and then I switched to Kamiko and I beat and I like played, you know, I really got into Kamiko and I played like that until pretty much I beat it. Well, I played it handheld for a while and I put it on the TV and I played the last boss on the TV. And then I was like, oh yeah, now I could, you know, I could switch to like Snake Pass or like back to like Mr. Shifty or something like that. And it's all just like so seamless, you know, going from like one game to another. It's really cool. Was there, uh, is there anything else that you've been playing aside from, uh, Switch stuff? Aside, uh, aside from new stuff? Yeah, I've been, uh, well, I got my, I, I'll say I got my, uh, chip maestro up and running finally. So, yeah, I've got, man, it requires so much stuff to get that thing going. But, uh, I finally did. I can play it. Um, it's a little more complicated than I expected, but I actually kind of expected that as well. So. Oh, the, um, the keyboard thing, right? Right. So I have the, uh, 25 key MIDI controller keyboard at Analysis and it's controlling, you know, the cart directly. And then I have the cart going into my TV. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's working. Um, it's fun. And then, uh, as far as games, I've been, I purchased, uh, the 999 game, nine, what's the actual name of it? Nine persons, nine rooms, nine yeah, hours that's a, or something like that. That's a 3DS game or is that a DS game? It's an original DS game. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember hearing I, about it, but I never, I never played it. Man, I've been hearing a lot of great things about this game and it pops up all over the place and hidden gems and, uh, non games and all these other like categorical lists that I'll see online in a you yeah, know this like a it's, it's like a trilogy a, too so yeah. is um, it, is I you're you're it's greatly recommended you play these sequentially so I, if I wanted to play either of the other games I would have to play this one first anyway so I just figured I'd finally buy it and I spent about I think with shipping it was like twenty two oh okay and it's just the cartridge it doesn't have any of the uh, literature with it but that was the best price i could find and it came pretty quickly and uh the packaging that the uh the seller shipped in was actually pretty funny um it was like the envelope the ebay envelope was just like covered in like roses like pictures of roses <laughs> oh nice. and then inside of the the game was like in this nice little like plastic pouch that had printed on it like have a wonderful day and May your world be full of flowers or something. There's like flowers <laughs> all over that too. May may your so, nights be filled with nines. It's something like that, but uh, you know it wasn't directly related to the game. But uh, wh- whomever this seller was or this company, they definitely have the flower thing going, so that's cool. But uh, yeah, it's fun so far. I haven't played too much into it. I think I'm a little over an hour into it, maybe a little further. Uh, but it's it's not like anything I've played before. I mean, shit, it kind of reminds me a little bit maybe of Deja Vu. It's like kind of like visual novel, choose your own yeah. adventure type thing, right? It reminds me the most of Deja Vu, I think, is probably the best like mm. comparison I could say of it. But uh, it's fun so far, and it's gruesome, and it's definitely very adult-themed. Like, this was definitely a mature game. I mean, I think it's got a mature rating on it, but, you know, kind of cool that this was on the DS. Oh, sure. And uh, But I'm, I, I'm loving it so far, and uh, I definitely think it was worth what I paid for it, you know, 
what I'm going to get out of it. And uh, I'm playing it on my old 3DS because I can't find my charger. So <laughs> for the, the regular DS, char- yeah. For my for oh well, for my other, I can't find the charger for the 3DSs, and I have two 3DSs. Well, my other one was dead. My new 3DS is dead. The battery's dead, so I'm playing it on uh, the black one. And you have you have no chargers? Like, out of all these 3DSs, you I can't do. find your chargers? I do. I just can't find it. I actually own two of them. I just can't find either of them. Oh, wow. You did, I mean, I you should have got a cradle, man. <laughs> I have a charging cradle, like, just, just right next to my bed, just right to the... Just my to right to my right. I have that's where my DS is. I keep it I in the charging cradle, cradle, so I don't have to worry about that. Well, that's a great idea, and maybe something I should consider investing. In. They're not that expensive. I mean, you can order them from Nintendo. I think they shouldn't be. They were. I mean, they were out of stock for a while when I got it, but that was when the new 3DS first came out. They should be should be around now. Did you ever Did you ever play Hotel Dusk? That's kind of. I guess that's kind no, of. No, like, I didn't. Uh, I played that game and I really liked it. And I thought about v- going a through visual it again. novel or yeah, it's, it. yeah, it's a visual novel. You even held it like a book. <laughs> it even went that far. But I thought that game was really cool. It was like one of those things where I just couldn't really put it down. Like kind of like Kamiko where I just, it's not that long, but I was like so intrigued by the story that I just kept playing it. Yep. And hopefully 999 is like that too. It is so far, man. It's, I've been like, yeah, once I've been playing it, like I can't put it down and then, you know, I will and then I won't play it for a little while. But mm-hmm. it's great because you can just shut the DS and come back to it whenever you feel like it. Just like a real book. Yeah. I, uh. I just um I just set up a like I said before I just set up a new office uh, slash studio for for you know the podcast and for me like one of my roommates moved out so I have this extra room now and um and I have like uh I have two TVs I have like my retro center set up and uh and like another HD TV for for other games and uh so I've been playing a lot of retro stuff still and since uh it's been the it's like the 20 year anniversary for uh, Blast Core, which is an old rare game for 64. I think it was the first rare release for Nintendo 64. But uh, it's a it's an awesome game. Like I was playing that game again. Like I I was just you know I was thinking about it because I I'd heard that it was 20 years old and I'd heard heard a podcast talking about it and I was like uh, I was like man I, that game was really fun. I was like I don't remember. I'm like I don't remember if I have that or not. And I looked through my games and I couldn't find it. And I'm like oh I don't think I have it. But I moved all of my cartridge games like into the office and I basically, I like alphabetized everything and like categorized my 64 games because, you know, you can't see the, I made it to where like I could find them even though you can't see like what the game says, you know, I try to find a way to like put them into groups and stick them in different areas. But as I was doing that, I found the Blast Core cart and I was like, oh man, I do have it. So I popped it in and I've just been playing through it like on, on my, uh, off time and it's, it's such a fun game. I don't know how much you, how much you played that game. What what style of game is this? It, I feel I, it's probably I feel it's, like it. it's hard to explain it because it's different than any other game that I've played. It's like it's it's basically like uh, so the story is there's a giant truck that has like a nuclear bomb on it or something, and it's basically driving out of control. Uh, it's it can't stop, and you basically have to take you basically have to destroy all of the buildings in front of this vehicle, so it won't hit one and destroy the entire world is basically what the story of this game is so there's these different levels based around you using these different vehicles you start off using like a you start off using like a bulldozer but eventually you get like a robot with only one arm that does like that does somersaults and flips and stuff or you get like a robot that like can fly into the sky and like dive bomb on uh like it does like a kind of a butt stomp but with its legs it comes down and destroys buildings and you unlock like cars from like uh dukes of hazard like the dukes of hazard cars in there you can find like the a-team van like there's some other like like you can like cop cars and stuff like that and there's like races in the game that you can do and there's like crazy like there's a pac-man level in one of them like this just like this all these different crazy levels that you do around these vehicles that you find and it's and it's a lot of fun I don't know, yeah. I don't know if you played it, but it was just, it was such a bizarre game, and it's really fun to play still. Is it a uh, hard game to get a hold of? Do you know if it's a collector's item in that regard? I, I don't it think rare? it's, I don't think it's as expensive. I would expect maybe like 20 bucks or less, but I haven't really looked into it. I think this might be the one that I had in high school, or when, uh, or the one I got, I don't know. I don't remember when I got it. I remember my friend, my friend from high school, Caleb. He had it, like, because he's like, "Oh, dude, it's really cool. You can destroy stuff." And I remember playing it, and I was like, "Wow, this game is insane!" And you end up like you go to different parts of the world, like as this car comes through, and eventually you go to the moon, and you go through like the whole like solar system and all these different planets. Like it's, it's just like it's just great. It's just like super out there, weird, r- weird, rare stuff. Just having fun, you know. And it's, uh, it's I definitely remember this. It's a really cool game. Yeah, I'm sure you heard of it. It's totally. 
It's a lot of the, fun. Like if we ever case, do. I'm looking at it on eBay right now, and I recognize the uh, the case and all that. Yeah, it has the it has the dive bomb robot on the front, and there's like a I think there's like a hazard symbol or something, and it says yeah, Blast hazard. Core. Yeah, I remember there was a I remember there was an Not article. Expensive. Yeah, it shouldn't be that expensive because I think they released a lot of them, and I think it sold fairly well. I mean, like I said, it was like in the height of rares popularity. Like this is their first game for 64, so people were like, "Holy shit!" You know, came out in '97. So it was like kind of towards the be you know towards the beginning. I remember it being like I remember it coming out around the same time as like Turok, like those uh like those type of games. But yeah, it's uh it's a lot of fun. Like you should download it and or you know, download it. You can't download it. Uh well you well you could I guess, but we don't do that. But uh yeah, you should get it. You should buy it and play it if you, if you want. If you wanted to have fun, uh, it's like a top-down viewpoint, you know, and you just go through and solve puzzles, I guess, to unlock different vehicles and destroy you basically, every level you like destroy the pathway for the truck, but then you get to go through it again and go like try to find all the buildings. You try to destroy all the buildings. You find like these little lights that turn on. You try to rescue all of the people that are in there and there's like secrets that you can find as well. So I just bought it for 831 with free shipping. Oh man, eight bucks. Yeah, totally worth it. <laughs> we'll have to, if we ever do a rare episode, we'll have to, we'll have to get into it. Sounds good, man. I uh, I also um I played a I played a little bit of Zelda like start playing that again so that's cool I made it through the I made it through the um the what do you call it the, the camel. camel yeah I made it through the camel dungeon is I that did your that. third or fourth guardian that's my third oh okay well you know what that's the hardest one so you're good to go oh oh yeah actually I didn't think it was that hard but I used the master sword on it and I kind of but I did have to look online because I couldn't figure it out yeah the boss is hard I mean all you have to do is once you know how to beat him but. Yeah, there was some weird stuff I would have never figured out, like uh, like making him Magnesis strike thing. himself and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoilers, I guess we have to do a spoiler cast at some point. You've already beat it. Hopefully, I'll beat it in a couple of weeks or something, and we'll get to we'll get to doing that. But yeah, I played that. I played that for a little bit. But yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. Mostly just moving and playing some old retro stuff when I can. And I've but. been playing the new Mario Kart, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got a uh, you got Mario Kart Deluxe. Uh, let's yeah, get into I, I got that. Deluxe. Yeah. So you got Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Uh, tell me about it. What do you think? Well, I think it's definitely a game I've played before. <laughs> yeah, but this time it's deluxe. It's glaring, you know, the entire time I'm playing it. Like, everything's unlocked, so that's strange. Um, because it's like I just booted up my Wii U game on my Switch, but I don't have any of my trophies anymore, and there are some things that aren't unlocked, especially the vehicle customization stuff. Yeah. I gotta unlock that all over again. Um, which kind of sucks, but. You know, I just started myself out on, like, going through all the cups. So I'm just going to beat all the 50cc, whatever. I know it's yeah. going to be, Those like, Those are always easy. so boring, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and kind of boring, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to slog through it and get reacclimated with the controls and all that. Um, smart steering oh, is, yeah. is, uh, is by default. Is, yeah, it's is, on there uh, by default. It's, it's really hard to figure out how to, like, deactivate it. I had to get online to figure it out. Yeah. It might be within the uh, the little manual inside the case. I haven't looked. Yeah, there's like an auto. There's an auto accelerate also on there, right? For kids who don't know how to play Mario Kart, like helps you uh, helps you play. Right, it makes you feel like you're a god because like you'll be about to go off the track and then all of a sudden the cart will just. You're like, wait, I, I, I like steered away from the edge and I just perfectly steered back on in the track without like going out of control and. I don't know. It, it it was fun for a second because it was automatic and I was playing it on 50 cc. But I was just like, man, this is I don't like this. Yeah. And apparently you can still have it on. You can have the it. online mode, perhaps. Yeah, you can play it online as well. Which which seems unfair. So I I finally figured out how to deactivate it, which um, I can't even remember exactly how I did. I don't There's think just it's a certain yeah. point which in the character selection after you select your vehicle, then you can like toggle um, the smart steering on and off by yeah. hitting the L button or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it's like a win button or anything like that because it, it, it keeps you from doing like shortcuts and stuff like that because you can't fall off the race. Yep. You know, you can't fall off the track. So it doesn't really, it is, I don't think it's actually an advantage. I don't think people necessarily. But I hate with it. it on there. Yeah, that's what I I've heard. It, so I, yeah. I got rid of it as soon as I could. And um, well, yeah, you don't want you don't want that. I've played online. I've played online. Um, it's smooth as butter. It's much quicker than it was on the um, the Wii U. Like you're in you're into batches like super quick. Yeah, it, it, it pairs you up with people or whatever. Not pairs, but sure. It, it yeah. groups you up with people, and then you can stick with that group. You can play either you know the GP mode or you can play 
um, battle mode. Well, I was like, well, I got to play battle mode online, and and it cycles through all the modes randomly, but you still play with the same group of people. So it's pretty cool. And uh, I say the, the battle mode's great. I love it so far. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, how good is the battle, is the battle mode? I I wish that you know instead of having to buy an all new game. It was DLC, it, yeah. It was DLC because I wish it was. It should have been still offered to the Wii to the people like me. I agree. Who, who still play the Wii U version? I mean, they should have at least offered it like at I don't know, like twenty bucks or something. You would still sell some. I know they want you to buy the Switch version, but come on, man, throw throw a bone to the Wii U people. Maybe they will eventually, but yeah, I agree with you there completely. Um, because as great as it is, it doesn't in itself justify even my discounted price, which was forty eight. I paid plus tax. Through the twenty uh, percent Amazon Prime discount, yeah, that's which I also bit. I ordered my uh, I ordered my cart too late, hoping to get it on day one. Ended up not getting it until Tuesday, so I've only had it for a day at this point. Oh, okay, that's that's too bad. But at least you you know, you, but uh, but you like the battle stuff that's on there. Like it is a lot of fun to play. I like think, the levels I think are the cool. Levels, the levels are really cool, and I haven't played through all of them yet. There's eight of them, but uh, you know, like at the uh, Switch event that you and I went to, we played the original. Um, Super Nintendo battle mode level that was in there. Mm-hmm. And that's that was in there. I played around with it, and it had the feather and stuff. And you know, So, like, when we played the battle mode, it, we were only able to play the one with the, the bombs or whatever. Yeah, we did the bomb one, which but was this, fun for what the, it was. These modes I've played have had, like, all the items, like, lots of different items and stuff. So it's been it's a lot more fun. And, yeah, the, ba- the battle mode is really cool. I think I wish it was in the original Wii U version. It's like, it almost feels like a ripoff that something this cool can't be in that version too. Yeah. That was deliberately left out or whatever. Maybe not. I don't know. But, um, you know, that game came out nearly three years ago or right around three years ago. So yeah, it did. Oh, well, yeah, it's a shame, but, uh, I, yeah, I can't wait to play it. Like whenever I see you again, we'll, we'll play it. I definitely have renewed interest in it and I'm really, really excited about, um, you know, taking this to visit my family and doing the two player mode with the uh, Joy Cons. I haven't tried playing with the Joy Con yet because I already know I'm not going to like it, but it's still, you know, something cool that's a possibility. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if it'll be uh, that bad. I don't know. I like it in the portal mode. Like, uh, I wasn't feeling great earlier today, so I was just like laying in bed and I took my Switch to bed and was playing Mario Kart and it looks amazing on the, the gamepad. Or, yeah, but uh, the gamepad on the Switch. Well, yeah. uh, but you know, <laughs> much Switch better, pad. much better than it looked on the, uh, the Wii U gamepad. You know, it yeah, for great. sure. And uh, it feels great. The HD Rumble is something else. Um, you got you got to kind of put your ear up next to it. But when you collect a coin, it actually makes a coin sound, and I find that really intriguing because how does it? You know, there's no speaker. There's not a speaker. There's not a speaker exactly. But you're not just like going crazy through your sickness. Like there's an actual coin sound in there. Yeah. Yeah, you have to kind of like you know either have no you know turn the volume all the way down just so you can only hear the the rumble of the controller, oh. or kind of put your ear near it while you're playing. Oh, weird! But it, really, it makes a really like muffled like ding like ding sound like a oh, coin. Weird. Well, now I gotta buy it. <laughs> and <laughs> to it's hear just the coin sound. It's the HD rumble. Gotta oh, yeah, make sure and prove that it's there. The HD rumble um, somehow was able to simulate an actual sound. Yeah, exactly. so I find that. I well, that's, find that yeah, that's really that's really cool. Compelling. Um, but like I told you, it's almost like you were underwater and you and somebody in the other room collected a coin in Mario Kart. You know, that's kind of like what it sounds like. It's like burr. Oh like wow! It's yeah, really, like like an echo chamber, sort of. <laughs> yeah, you kind of hear like there's a miniature ocean inside of your pro controller, and someone collected a coin in it. Oh wow. That's crazy. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm I'm glad you're having a good time with it. Um, yeah, I'll I, I'll buy it whenever it becomes a twenty dollars select. I'm sure. But you, or, you're gonna pay, <laughs> play my copy at some point. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I I definitely like to like to try the battle mode stuff. I just couldn't bring myself to pay the whole thing for it, the whole amount. Plus, there's other stuff on the horizon that I'm looking to pay like a full sixty bucks for, and I figured I'd just save for those. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I think uh, I think that that does it for our. Episode. Is there anything else you want to say, real quick, before we before we get out of here? Not really. Other than I'm really excited for everything that's to come. You know, next Thursday is seems like a really cool eShop release date, and uh, yeah, there's E3 shit on the horizon, and uh, yeah, there's a I lot a lot of good stuff to come. We we we're I mean. We got to hear about virtual console at E3. Come on. That's got to be where it happens. I hope so. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, I was like, I have all these. It's kind of, yeah, like I said, having all the cool indies, like, reminds me of, like, the heyday of WiiWare and all that. I just need the virtual console, too. And then I have, like, the full I know, man. greatness of the first, of those, like, first few months of the Wii. You know, it's like, I have all this cool stuff that I can 
buy for like not the price of a full game, you know. Not when I was laying, like be- laying in bed earlier today, I really wanted to like play virtual console on my Switch. It yeah. really was like, man, I wish I could just be playing like old Zelda right now or something like. Yeah. Well, when, you whenever, know, I could yeah. I could have walked to the other room and grabbed my Wii U tablet and kind of achieved that, but it still was like, why not? Why doesn't this newest console I bought have everything on it? It should by now. Well, yeah, that's what I thought when I bought the Wii U too. It's like, why does this new console not have all these things that I had on the Wii? But yeah, we got we got to wait for that. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully it comes out soon. Anyway, uh, we've been your hosts. I'm Trey Johnson. I'm Jeremy Mikowski. And this has been episode 68. You can find our podcast website at uh, nintendomainpodcast.com. Uh, I changed our YouTube channel. Now it's YouTube slash Nintendo Main Podcast, so you can find. You know, the sort of video versions of the episodes on there. There are a couple that I couldn't fit on there because they're too large. That's why you haven't seen the Mario Kart one on there. But I did put, like, the last, like, four or five on there. Hoping to put some footage of games on there soon as well. Um, you can, uh, I have my Twitter's Nintendo, Ninten underscore domain. You can look at all my stuff that I put up about Kamiko and how the, and see the proof that the, one of the designers liked him. <laughs> That's on there. I try to That'd post, cool. I try to post stuff from the Switch, so. You know, always look at look at stuff like that. Um, we have, you know, we have Facebook too. You can email us Nintendo Main Podcast at gmail dot com. So check that out and uh, stay cool or whatever. Yeah, uh, <laughs> card it up if you if you got that game. Yeah, card it. Yeah, card it up. Look for uh, look for Jeremy online. You can find him. I'll be on. My name is uh, what's my name? It's like it's really strange. I don't even know. I can't remember. It. I can't remember. I wish well, I remember. Really well, stay tuned until next week, and we'll tell you what Jeremy's cart name is. But until then, we will see you later. Peace. Later. slamming things around. <laughs>